What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is me, Jell the Casual Card Gamer, and today we are going to be looking at Cardinal Deus Orphist. You thought it was me. No, I did that wrong. But anyway, <laughs> let's get straight into the deck profile. So, let's look at the ride the ride deck first. We have Fovi, Rutus, Cubizia, and Orphist. Fovi's ability, of course, is if you draw, if you go second, you get to draw a card. Then Rutus's ability is when you ride him, you can search your deck for up to one order, world order card added to your hand. Then it is a 10k um, attacker or booster as a rear guard if um, your world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight. Now, next we have Cardinoid, Cardinal Noid Cubizia. When a world is put into your order zone, you can choose one of your units and give it plus five until end of turn. Then during your turn, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, it gets plus 5k. Now we have the flavor of the week. We have Cardinal Deus Orphist. So Orphist's ability is during your turn, if he's a rear guard or a vanguard, he gets plus 5k if your world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight. And if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, you can counter blast two, call three Shadow Army tokens to the field. Now, for those of you who do not know what uh, Dark Knight and Abyssal Dark Knight are, I will get into those very, very promptly when looking into the main deck. So, Cardinal Deus Orphis, three more copies for them sweet, sweet, juicy Persona rides. Now, our world cards are, <clears throat> are basically our set orders, and if you have one of them in your order zone, then your world becomes Dark Knight. Then if you have two or more, you become it becomes Abyssal Dark Knight. So you play this card by Soul Blasting 1. Then when this card is placed into the order zone, you can choose one of your opponent's front row rear guards and retire it. And that is it for our grade threes. I used to play Jobber Tail just because I thought it was really funny, but now a lot of decks don't leave their their uh their back row on the field so um i had to take those out anyway <clears throat> moving into the next pile of stoof we have cardinal draco alvedard its ability is during your turn if your world is dark knight it gets plus two but if it's abyssal dark knight then he gets plus five instead then at the end of the battle that it attacked you can retire one of your shadow army tokens to retire one of your opponent's rear guards so this is really nice just because it gives you more options to remove things from your opponent's field. Next we have Cardinal Fanged Marisma. When this unit is placed on a rear guard, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal one world order from them, add it to your hand, then put the rest of the cards at the bottom of your deck. So if this misses, then you're literally just bottom decking three things, but it is still good in the way that it is three more copies of a Rutus search, which is nice, albeit not as widespread, because with Rutus you can just search your deck um, entirely. But anyway, it's a good card and you can always just toss it for ride deck um, discards anyway. And next we have Hollowing Moonlit Knight, so it is Soul Blast 1. When this card is placed into your order zone, you draw a card. And next we have two new world orders. We have Eclipsed Moonlight. So you play this with Counterblast 1, and when you do, then you can call a Shadow Army token to your field. And now this is really nice because it is a grade two, so you can search this out with Rutus on Ride, then wait till grade two, activate it, then you have a 15K attacker or booster wherever you wanna put this thing. And it is really good because it lets you be a little more aggressive earlier on in the game. Next, for our grade ones, we have four copies of Cardinaloid Thumberino, four copies of Bubble Mine, and four copies of Violate Dragon. So, starting with Thumberino, her ability is when she boosts a Shadow Army token, you can give that token plus 15k. Then at the end of the battle that it boosted, you retire both rear guards in that lane that she's in, and then you get to draw, you get to draw a card. It's pretty nice, 
hard draw. It's okay. <laughs> Even though you do have to call her out of your hand. Um, next we have Detonation Mutant Bobble Mine. So Bobble Mine, of course, is the counter charger of the deck. At the end of the battle that it boosted, you can put it into your soul and you can counter charge one. And Violate Dragon, of course, is a PG and it's always nice to have PGs. So <laughs> there it is. And of course, our triggers. We have Jur Star Dragon Deity of Infinitude Elder Breath. And of course, you get your 100 million, you remove it from the game, you draw a card. Then its additional ability is double the attack and crit of all of your front row units for the rest of the turn, which is really, really nice. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're getting those crits before you get, um, before you trigger out uh, your Eldo Breath. And for our regular triggers, we have seven crits, four fronts, and four heals. Seven crits, uh, partially because it is so good with economics in the hand, at least um, in in my playtesting. Um, and of course, you want to get extra benefits out of the Eldo Breath proc. And the four copies of the new front trigger because they are 20k guards and I've played fronts in this deck anyway. So that is it for this deck profile guys. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, <clears throat> I might start doing uh, retrospect deck profiles as well after the streams just to see if there's anything that I do want to change out of them. But for now, this evening, make sure that you stay tuned for the stream. I will be playing this deck against a couple of friends just to see if um, I did this properly or not. <laughs> and yeah, make sure to leave your comments and just suggestions down in the below, not in the description because you can't put things in the description. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I am Jello the Casual Card Gamer. Take care.